Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Vento Arrayo, or Golden Wind if you prefer, episode 8. Um, so I'm actually recording this uh, early afternoon on Saturday. Normally I record these ahead of time, but yesterday I had places I went. Uh, I went to the bar to meet up with a friend there and play some games and stuff. Uh, and then afterwards I went to um, a rock show, uh, Emo Night Brooklyn in Detroit. Um, and I was there from like 9 to 2 a.m. So, <laughs> um, I just obviously didn't have the time. So, at this point, my father and my brother had just left to go somewhere. So, yeah, I'm just kind of, uh, <laughs> just kind of getting along with this and doing what I can at the moment. Um, so yeah, last we left off. Giorno and Mista had gone ahead to the island to scope things out and try to find the partner of the guy they uh, defeated and took hostage on the boat. And Mista ends up, uh, with Giorno's help, uh, finding him and chasing him down. But not everything works out exceptionally well, obviously. <laughs> um, things are a little tougher. Um, and Mista has to end up chasing this guy. He does end up shooting the guy in the leg thanks to uh, his uh, sex pistols stand. And he manages to track him to this truck, but yeah, then that's kind of where it ends. We don't know exactly how this is going to go, and we still don't know this guy's stand. So it's pretty interesting to think about. Uh, this guy is going to be a small fry in the long run, but I'm wondering exactly how far they're going to take it, you know? Um, so yeah, we're going to find out. And yeah, I am excited to see what we've got. So for the time being, uh, when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black, then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts. And will contain spoilers to the episode. So that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. Okay, so, a, a good conclusion to this little uh, story. It seems like this is kind of what we're getting right now. We're learning more about uh, Bucciarati's gang. Um, first, we learned about Abraccio, and now we're learn we learned about Mista. So... Next would either have to be uh, Narancha or the other guy whose name I cannot remember. <laughs> um, but we're learning about them as characters more and more uh, to kind of like develop them. And they're doing it in this very uh, basic way. It's just like one after the other. They each have their episodes, each have their stand users they have to fight. And each of them gives this backstory to their characters. Um, Abaccio was a cop who... Uh, fell into and discovered the corrupt side of things and just couldn't handle it anymore. And we have Mista, who was just this peaceful uh, guy who liked to just enjoy life for what it was, not worry too much, not focus too much, just enjoy things. And um, he stopped this, um, this rape and possibly murder uh, from, the, from happening. Uh, unbeknownst to him, his stand helped protect him, and he killed these guys who were abusing this poor woman. And it didn't, like, say exactly what happened after that, but, I mean, that was his first murder. That was the first time he's killed someone, so presumably at that point is, like, where he started to go in a different direction and eventually came across uh, Bruno. So, I don't know exactly which of the other characters we're going to go with next, but I am really interested. This is really interesting. I I'm liking how all of these characters are being portrayed. 
I, I like their different quirks and personalities. So yeah, so far I'm I am really enjoying Ventura Rayo. Um, I, I still would not say it's as good as Diamond is Unbreakable. I, I still think Diamond is Unbreakable is overall better. Um, but that's not to say that I, I don't like this. It, it's just different. Not in a bad way, just different. Um, so yeah, in this one, Mista is taking on Sale and his stand, Craftworks. Uh, Craftworks has the ability to affix any object to anything anything else, even the air. So he affixed this uh, truck driver to the truck itself. He's able to affix Mista to the handle of the truck. And he can even affix rocks to air in order to climb them. He can affix a bullet to the air. And if he taps it just a little bit uh, at a time, it, it builds up pressure. And that that reminds me of something. Oh, Breath of the Wild. I'm thinking like that reminds me of something specific and I can't think of it. But no, it's, it's Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. In that game, there is a, uh, there, there's this ability you get where you can stop time on an object, such as a giant rock. At that point, you can use like a, a weapon or something to hit the rock over and over, which builds up pressure. And it will launch the rock into the air once the time stop is done. Uh, you can climb atop it and ride it uh, over long distances or whatever have you. You can use it to attack enemies. All kinds of stuff like that. It's a pretty useful effect, and it definitely makes me think of that. Obviously, he's not quite using a time stop uh, kind of thing here. He's not Jotaro, but he's more along the lines of just affixing it in a specific place. He makes it so it cannot move. It cannot uh, do anything except stand there and build up the pressure that he puts on it. But he can't do it too much. If he puts too much pressure on it, then its path will become uncontrollable. And it will be too easy to predict, which is uh, something obviously he wouldn't want. And in the end, Mista defeats him by aiming for the exact same wound that he already had given him before that he was able to stop. So there's, there's just a lot of interesting assets to this. Um, Craftwork's ability to affix anything even inside of his own body is really powerful. Like, that's a legitimately powerful and useful stand. Um, I He can affix himself to presumably things too, I would assume. Um, it didn't specifically say, I think, that he can do it to himself, but we know he can do it to other people. So why not? Now, did he have to climb the rocks? Or can he affix himself to the air as well? I don't, it's not entirely clear. I'm thinking that maybe he can't just affix himself to the air. That he actually has to uh, use an object like rocks. I don't know, it wasn't entirely clear on that, on exactly all the specifications of how craft works, well, works. <laughs> um, and then there's the end of the episode where Giorno, like, gets in the truck and's like, no, we're, we're chasing someone, take us to the top, and it's like, fine. <laughs> it's like, wait, did, did you not see your friend and his victim coming out of that truck just a moment ago? I'm like, I I'm kind of confused on how all of that worked. And we're just supposed to believe that Giorno was just down there that entire time, not chasing them at all during this time? He was just down there, waiting? I don't know, it's just... That ending seems a little weird to me. I know it was done for a gag, especially because of the uh, truck driver and all. But still, I don't know, I'm not, I don't fully understand exactly what they what they're going for there and exactly where that's going if that's going to go anywhere um i guess we'll see in the next episode but all in all tell me what you thought of this episode of jojo's bizarre adventure vento areo or golden wind if you prefer uh tell me what you thought of the battle between mista and sail and what did you think of sail stand craftworks tell me your thoughts on all of that and more in the comments below and thank you so much for tuning in for now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time. And though you've come through many obstacles,
shed tears along the way You're still standing